Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to another episode of our Sassy in 5 series, where we try to break down all things Sassy in under five minutes. I'm your host, Brian Livesey with Ariaka Networks. Our first two episodes in this series have been big successes with over 4,000 YouTube views each, so thanks for watching. If you haven't seen those, we covered the general overview of what is Sassy in episode one. Why is it becoming so widely adopted in enterprises today? In episode two, we talked about the challenges enterprises will face or common pitfalls to watch out for in your Sassy journey. In this episode, I want to focus on the end of the journey, but before you reach that end state, decisions need to be made. Those decisions will require a lot of internal collaboration amongst the infrastructure and infosec teams before that implementation can begin. Are you going to adopt a hybrid approach to SASE, comprising of various third-party best-of-breed solutions, or does a single vendor unified SASE architecture make the most sense for the enterprise? There isn't a right or wrong answer to these approaches. It could depend on a lot of factors, including your current vendor contracts, integrations required, where you're at in your consumption of cloud, is the workforce remote hybrid today? All these factors will likely need to be weighted as any organization considers their options. Let's start with the definitions. I think everyone understands what hybrid SASE is. Another term you'll often hear for hybrid is best of breed. This approach to SASE architecture truly exploded over the first year of the pandemic. Overnight in the spring of 2020, companies saw 100% of their knowledge workforce go home when everything in the world was shut down. 100% remote workforce was unprecedented at the time. No one had VPN capacity and cloud security licenses to accommodate that on day one. Enterprises were quickly adopting VPN as a service and cloud security solutions that could scale immediately. Then came the challenge of integrating the network and security functions. The integration of these stitched third-party solutions became what is known as hybrid or best of breed SASE today. This movement simply came out of a necessity to move fast. Even Gartner couldn't have predicted the adoption of hybrid SASE during the pandemic when they only coined the term SASE in 2019. Remember, their hype cycles for technology adoption are often years in the making. When they defined the SASE framework in 2019, they didn't even refer to it as hybrid. It's really all that existed at that time with some minor exception. Whether enterprises were buying the point solutions and managing the integrations on their own, or whether they leaned on MSPs to vendor consolidate and manage those on their behalf, hybrid SASE can be challenging today with performance potentially sacrificed at times, depending on the complexity of the networking and the security integrations required. It wasn't until the last two years we've seen the term unified SASE used. Unified, as it's defined by authorities like Del Oro, describe the differentiation to hybrid SASE to be truly a unified control plane, where both networking and security functions are performed as part of a single pass architecture. This single pass architecture doesn't require secure handshakes like GRE or IPsec encapsulation when packets are being routed from one engine to another. Both networking functions and security policy enforcement happen within the same control plane. With the growth predictions of SASE being what they are today, more and more vendors will be architecting this unified control plane approach. But the list of players today with mature network stacks and their own native cloud security solutions is quite small. One vendor, one stop shop, one throat to choke meeting all the security needs for both on-prem and in the cloud applications, securing users wherever they may be in the world with whatever, do whatever device they may be accessing those corporate workloads with. Sounds a lot easier than it truly is for one vendor to do all this. So what are the pros and cons? The pros to hybrid SASE, you can maximize your existing investment with existing vendors. This is about using what you already have and then integrating it together. You get best of breed. You don't have to invest in new skills. Use what you've got. This is very attractive as you can start on your SASE journey very quickly. Those are the pros, but very quickly you realize the cons. It gets more and more complex to implement and maintain. It'll continue forever. It's a quick fix, not a long-term fix. And so as challenges develop, this solution will become less adaptable. Most importantly, as complexity and scalability demands increase, latency in supporting high-performing applications becomes increasingly difficult. Hence, more and more people are concluding that this is not the right long-term solution. So as far as unified SASE, well, the pro is it's one throat to choke. Much better integration, consolidation of vendors, lots of positives. The cons are similar to what we discussed in the last episode, over-indexing security at the expense of networking, lack of vendors who offer a true unified solution, and most importantly, the ability to scale, the ability to deliver high-performing applications without introducing latency problems. In five minutes, it's hard to go deep into these topics, but uh, even if I did, it'd be hard for you guys to remember everything. Most people only need to understand the top 20%. So that's the goal of this series. I hope you find it beneficial. 